Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new lecture of our course on heterogeneous systems. Today, we talk about another important parallel pattern, merge sort. We're going to talk about merge sort, but before that, let me very briefly remind you what are the other parallel patterns that we have covered in this course. We started with the reduction, an operation that reduces a set of values to a single value. Uh, remember that the operator that we use needs to have certain properties like associativity, commutativity, and identity value. And the reduction, as you may remember, is a key parallel primitive. Um, we uh, discuss implementations of reduction that are divergence free because this way we can maximize warp utilization and uh, consequently we can maximize the performance on the GPU. The next uh, parallel pattern that we covered is uh, histogram computation that uh, frequently use primitive for reducing the dimensionality and extract extracting notable features of the data sets. Uh, we discuss about um, histogramming, where are the applications where we can find it typically in image and video processing. And remember that what we do in uh, histogram is uh, accessing the input data and based on the value that we read from the input data, we update one bin or counter in the output histogram. We have to be careful uh, and avoid the data race when in, in, in parallel implementations, for example, in GPU, to do so, we have to use atomic operations. And atomic operations, as you may remember, have um, like that, the, the key drawback that they serialize the execution when there is an atomic conflict, but we also discuss as well um, in, interesting uh, and useful uh, optimizations that uh, can <clears throat> definitely alleviate this drawback of the atomic operations. Uh, then we covered the convolution, which is widely used in signal processing, image processing, you know, video processing, and computer vision, and also very much using an important type of uh, neural networks these days that are the convolutional neural networks. As you may remember, to calculate the output values uh, in, a, in, a, in a convolution, what we do is applying a filter or a mask on the elements of the um, input, and uh, we obtain partial products and, 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 and finally a weighted sum that that gives us the output value. Here you can see one example for a 1D convolution, and this is another example for a 2D convolution. Remember as well that uh, the good way of optimizing the performance of a convolutional layer uh, on GPUs is lowering the convolution to a matrix multiplication, such as uh, this example what, that we have uh, on the slide. After that, we covered uh, prefix sum or scan an operator, an operation that takes an input array and an associative operator and returns an output array that is the result of recursively applying the associative operator on the elements of the input array. <clears throat> Remember that we talk about the exclusive and inclusive scan, and we discuss different ways of uh, implementing the scan operation on GPUs using a hierarchical approach. This is the scan, scan, add version. We also discuss the reduce scan, scan version. Uh, and as the basic uh, algorithm, we uh, talk about the Kogi Stone uh, parallel scan algorithm. Uh, in the next lecture, we talk about the sparse matrices. Remember that a sparse matrix is a matrix where most of the elements are zero, and these represent uh, opportunities in the sense that we can save a lot of space uh, in memory or memory capacity. We don't have to store the zeros. We also don't need to load the zeros, and we don't need to compute with the zeros. But accessing um, and the, the compressed representation of a sparse matrix uh, from memory uh, in, and, and operating with it entails certain challenges. Uh, in this slide, you can see how we could implement uh, the um, a sparse matrix vector, vector multiplication when the matrix set is um, compressed with the CSR representation. After that, we were talking about graph processing and um, in particular about the breadth first search algorithm. Remember that breadth first search is an algorithm that we use to discover what are the <clears throat> neighbors of a of um, um, a specific uh, source node and what's the distance to all other um, um, nodes that belong to the same graph from this uh, source uh, node. Um, we discussed the challenges that there we have uh, when implementing graph processing algorithms on GPU, but um, we also <clears throat> we talk about uh, the uh, uh, hierarchical approaches that we use to optimize the performance of BFS um, on GPU. We talk about this um, two-level hierarchy of queues where we have um, uh, one first level uh, in, in the shared memory is what we call the block queue where threads insert 
the elements that will have to be the, the, the nodes that will have to be visited in the next iteration of the algorithm. That's what we call the output frontier on half iteration. Um, after uh, in queuing output nodes uh, or nodes to visit in the next iteration in the block queue, we have to uh, spill th those contents to the global queue. After that, uh, redistribute to the <clears throat> available workers. <clears throat> and we also talk about a hierarchical kernel arrangement as a way to uh, minimize as much as possible the synchronization needs. Um, if uh, the size of the frontiers, the size of the queues is not too large, we can use a, a simple approach where a single thread block uses interblock synchronization, thus saving um, the, the term term kernel termination and the overhead of relaunching a new kernel, if not will have to go for uh, kernel two where we have to relaunch kernel. But remember that we also discussed a, a more efficient version that saves this kernel termination and relaunch by using persistent thread blocks. So this has been all uh, so far regarding the parallel patterns. Today, we talk about a new parallel pattern that is called merge sort. Merge is uh, an operation where uh, we take two sorted uh, arrays or two sorted lists as the input and we generate one single output list that is uh, combined and sorted as well. Observe that there is going to be an order relation here. For example, one element, so uh, that ele elements will be sorted based on this relation, for example, less than or equal to. And we may require this merge sort operation to be stable, that is, maintaining the relative order of elements which have the same value or the same key. Observe as well that we are talking about lists in the examples that we will cover in this uh, lecture. We will only uh, talk about um, uh, lists with uh, simple elements, just one value. Uh, however, uh, this list can also uh, contain like tuples of elements um, with uh, different, each value, each tuple with different values and one of them being the key. In the end, we are going to focus today on how we sort um, <clears throat> the input arrays based on this uh, key. And there might, might be <clears throat> also one preference. Um, for example, the elements of list A go before the elements of list B when they have the same value. We are going to make this assumption as well in our examples. Merge is an important building block for sorting algorithms, sorting algorithms, and it's also uh, frequently used in the reduce step of map reduce frameworks. However, um, implementing a parallel implementation of merge is uh, pretty challenging due to the dynamic na nature of data accesses that uh, are going to be challenging to uh, obtain maximum efficiency when accessing um, the memory the memory by exploiting locality. We are going to uh, discuss what the problems are and what could be uh, potential optimizations as well. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with a simple uh, example. As I said before, there is an order relation, for example, and that's what we are going to consider in this lecture, less than or equal to um, in the sorted list and in the merge list. Observe that here we have two input lists, A and B. A contains five elements, B contain, uh, contains four elements, thus the output C is going to contain nine elements. So we focus on a stable sort, which means that uh, the, uh, uh, we are going to keep the relative order uh, of the elements of the um, um, same value. For example, this 10 will always go before this 10. And also whenever A and B have elements of the same value, the elements of A go first. That means that this 10 will go before these two things uh, in the uh, final destination. So uh, observe as well that um, there are some, um, like we, ha we have to compare elements from the uh, different arrays in order to uh, perform uh, the, the um, merge operation. And in this case, we find that the smallest element among all the elements from A and B is this one. So we place this one. Then we place this seven. Observe that this seven is also equal to this seven here. But due to the fact that we assume that elements of A go before elements of B, we first uh, place this seven in, in the output array C, then the next seven, and then these uh, three elements, eight, nine, and 10 from array A, and finally the last uh, three elements from array B. 
uh, implementing a sequential sort is uh, relatively simple. It's quite a simple code indeed. Um, here we can see the example. We um, start with the indices to A, B, and C, all of them equal zero. And then we start um, uh, going over the two arrays A and B, comparing uh, values from uh, array A and from array B. And depending on what's the um, smaller is uh, or uh, in, in, if it's equal, then uh, we will choose uh, the element from array A, we write to the output. So for example, in the very uh, initial iteration, we have I equals zero, J equals zero. These are the indices of A and B respectively. We compare A zero and B zero, and we see that A zero is uh, smaller. So we place it in uh, array C. Uh, then we increase, we increment in this case, the index i and the index k, and again, we compare. These two are the same, but because um, uh, the, the elements from a go first, we place uh, the d7 in the output position, c1 in particular, and then we move to the next element. So we increment i and we increment k. And again, we compare. In this case, the element b0 is um, smaller than the element a two from array A. Uh, so we place in the output in K equal to, we place uh, this uh, seven for coming from B. Uh, so we increment in this case, J and K. We again compare now uh, element uh, with value A, and the next uh, elements from matrix uh, A as well. And we go to the next part of the uh, code. In this next part of the code, we have finished with, completely finished with one of the input arrays, in this case, in this case, um, array A, that's why I is equal five. So I is equal to the size of the input array. And what that means is that uh, we have to copy the remaining part of B uh, into the output C. And that's what we do for K equals six, seven and eight. And this way we obtain the um, sequential merge. Uh, one uh, important or interesting observation here is the complexity of this sequential, uh, sequential algorithm. As you can see, uh, the complexity is all M plus N. So if we want to come up with a parallel implementation of the merge sort algorithm that is work efficient, we should uh, shoot for this complexity M plus N. So let's start discussing how to implement this uh, merge operation in parallel. First thing that we may try to do is a scatter parallelization. Remember that in a scatter parallelization, what we do is dividing the input across the available workers, in this case, the uh, GPU threads. So that would mean that each thread takes a section of the list A and a section of the list, list B, and then they, uh, if they, if they find the element locations in list C. So for example, we could assign these two elements to thread zero, to these two elements from array A and these two elements from array B to thread zero, these to thread one, these to thread two, and so on. However, the problem here is that the destination of an element of A or an element of B depends on the elements of the other list. And, um, <clears throat> and also depends on the elements of both lists that have been assigned to other threads. So for example, uh, the uh, relative order of these two elements, seven and eight here, um, is going to be uh, quite difficult to find because eight has been assigned to one thread, thread one, while this seven has been assigned to a different thread, thread zero. So in order to do like the, the, the right uh, uh, operation and to, and to write the uh, elements at the corresponding place of the output array, we will need to communicate across threads in some way. And that's uh, probably, probably pretty challenging and we don't have a systematic way of uh, doing uh, this communication and the parallelization. So because of that, we, try a gather approach that seems to be more reasonable for these uh, parallel uh, primitive. In this case, what we do is partitioning the output list equally among the threads. And now each thread collects input elements for each section of the output from both um, A and B input arrays. For example, thread zero is going to uh, uh, it's going to collect these elements from array A, these elements from array B, and place them in the corresponding positions of the 
assigned section of the output array. Uh, these would be the elements that uh, thread one needs to read from um, array A and place them uh, in the output array. And these are the elements that thread two takes care of. So the range of input elements to be used by each thread is a function of the input elements. That's something that we already know, but it's going to be um, uh, more uh, interesting after this observation. For any k such that uh, k is between zero and m plus n, that is k is the index to the output array c, um, we can find i and j such that k equals i plus j, while uh, i is the index of array uh, a and b is the index of array b. So um, for example, for this k equal three, we have i equal two and j equal one. So these i0 plus j0 are equal three. That is exactly the value of uh, k0. Or for k1, that is equal six, we find i1 equal five and j1 equal one. Or for k2, that is equal nine, we have i2 equal five and j2 equal four. So for an element uh, ck, uh, where k is referred to as its rank, i and j are referred to as uh, are referred to as its core ranks. Observe that the rank of an element of the output array is the sum of the core ranks to uh, from uh, uh, the, the input arrays a and b. So in our gather parallelization, each thread gathers the elements of a continuous section of the output. So all threads uh, identify the starting and ending locations of the continuous sections of the inputs, A and B, that they uh, will use. So we need to have an input identification and partition by finding the uh, core ranks. And all threads perform the merge for their sections in parallel. So each thread will execute the sequential merge in its own section. So now uh, let's recap. Observe that we have assigned uh, three different parts of the input array C uh, to thread zero, one, and two. What these threads zero, one, and two have to do is to identify what are the limits of their section. For example, for thread zero, it will start in K equals zero and it will finish in K equal three. Uh, for thread one, uh, we start in k equal three and we finish in k um, uh, equal six and so on and so forth. And then based on these ranks, for example, k zero equal three or k one equal six, we have to identify, we'll have to find, or each thread will have to find the associated core ranks, which are the i and j that sum together um, are equal to the corresponding k are, and are within the bounds of the, uh, the two uh, input arrays a and b. For example, for k0 equal 3, we find uh, we obtain i0 equal 2 and we obtain j0 equal 1. So let's see how we have to calculate these uh, core rank values. The current values of a prefix string leading to the kth output element is a per I uh, of I and J values that specify the rank values of the prefix strings of A and B that are used in forming the output prefix string leading to that K output element. For a given output uh, prefix string of rank K, its current values can be found by searching I and J such that K equals I plus J and these two conditions here happen element uh, a uh, of i minus one is uh, less or less than or equal to bj and bj minus one is uh, less than less than i uh, ai so that's what we are uh, going to do in the current calculation but uh, finding the current values for different threads is probably not uh, a balanced process uh, if we do a, let's say, linear search, because the search range for a prefix stream in a subset um, <clears throat> is a subset of that of a higher rank one. For example, 
um, if we think about these two ranks, K0 equal three and K1 equal six, the um, ranges, the search ranges <clears throat> in matrix A, sorry, in input A and uh, input list B for uh, K0 equal three are <clears throat> smaller than the search ranges for uh, K equal one. As you can observe, um, the, the, the thread that uh, obtains the current values for day K, this K1 will probably have to go through a larger section of, at least in this case, input uh, list uh, A uh, than the thread computing the current values for this K0 equal three, as you can see in the example. So finding uh, A2 uh, lower equal, less equal than B1 and B0 less than A3 needs a smaller search range than finding A4 uh, less or equal uh, than B1 and B0 less than A4. So what we are going to do in order to uh, accelerate this search and reduce the computational complexity is to use a binary search or an, an NRE search for the INJ values to minimize the effect of the increasing search ranges. And this way, we can reduce the computational complexity from ON to uh, O log N. So in the, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be the uh, search ranges of, of, in this case, for K1, and this is for uh, K2. So the core rank function that we um, uh, define, uh, as, as you can see it here, it takes the rank that for which we want to use, we, we want to find the current values and then uh, pointers to the input arrays A and B and the sizes of arrays uh, A and B. This current function is going to return the I uh, current and the J current is easily derived as K minus I. And this is our uh, function. Let's uh, analyze it by by using uh, one uh, simple example. Observe that we start initializing i and j, and we also use two other variables that are i low and j low that are going to um, define the, uh, the, the range of the input a and b where we are uh, doing the search. Then there is the, this uh, variable delta that we are going to use in the binary search to change the indices that we check and then there is a, a Boolean uh, active variable just to uh, keep track of iterations and, and check when we have to finish the um, computation or the, the process. So uh, this is how we are going to call the current function for k0 equal three. And in the iteration zero, we start <clears throat> assigning the, so when we start the, the, the execution of this function, we assign the initial values to i, i equals three, j equals zero, and then for i low equals zero and j low also equals zero. So now <clears throat> we compare elements um, i and j to zero and to the, the maximum value that they may have. And we also compare the corresponding elements uh, of the uh, input lists a and b. So in uh, this uh, very first iteration, i is uh, greater than zero, j is less than n, and a i minus one is greater than b j. So if we see that this a here for uh, a, it's this a two here is greater than this b zero here. So we go through um, this uh, path and we update the delta value um, in the corresponding way. After that, we update the values for j for i, for j low, and for i low correspondingly. So in this case, delta equals two. These are the updated, updated i low and j low. These are the updated uh, i and j. And then we go to the next iteration, iteration one. In iteration one, uh, we are going to take this path here because j is greater than zero, i is uh, less than m, and b j minus one, so that is uh, b, one is greater or equal to AI. So it's greater or equal to this A1 equal to seven. So that's uh, um, uh, why we calculate uh, using this expression here, we calculate delta and we use this delta to update the uh, indices uh, I and J. And then in iteration two, what we observe is that none of the 
two conditions here are uh, fulfilled. So uh, we go through the else uh, path of the of the of this if else statement, and finally we make active equal false. So what that means is that we we will get out of this while loop and will return the core rank i that is equal to for this uh, specific example. From this core rank uh, i equal to, we can calculate the core rank j that equals one. So in the basic parallel merge algorithm or implementation, each thread is going to be in charge of a continuous section of the output. So we need to find what's that uh, section exactly. We know that it's um, uh, defined by this k current and this k next. They define the beginning and the end of the corresponding section. In this example, this is the section assigned to thread one. And from these uh, two k values, k current and k next, we obtain the core rank values, uh, i current, i next, j current, and j next. And these uh, values are going to give us the uh, exact area where the uh, output needs to, uh, so where the uh, threads need to search um, in the input arrays uh, A and B. And this is the code of the basic parallel merge. Observe that we are dividing the whole output array uh, among the available threads. This is the uh, thread identifier. Uh, based on this thread identifier and based on the size of the uh, output, m plus n, and the total number of threads that we are using, we obtain a k current and k next. Using this k current and k next, we call the current function such that we obtain i current and i next, and then j current and j next. These define uh, the uh, ranges, the sections of the input lists A and B that we have to um, uh, look for, and uh, then we can perform the sequential merge. Each thread individually performs the sequential merge for the output section that has been assigned to it. <clears throat> The problem <clears throat> with this implementation is that it has uncoalless memory accesses. For example, in the first read of thread zero, we read element um, A0. In the first read of thread one, we are going to read element A2. And in, uh, thread two uh, is going to read element B1. And then for the writes happens exactly the same. The first element that the thread zero is going to write is this uh, Z0. Um, for thread one will be this three, three, uh, C3, and for uh, thread two will be C, uh, C6. So as you can see, the accesses are going to be on coalesce because these neighboring threads or adjacent threads are not accessing adjacent memory locations. The solution is to um, collaboratively load sections of A and B into the shared memory and perform a tile merge kernel. Because <clears throat> once we have loaded uh, sections, uh, continuous sections of A and continuous sections of B into the shared memory, threads can access shared memory and find the core ranks and then perform the, uh, sequential, um, uh, the sequential merge uh, using the values in shared memory without having to incur these uh, undesirable uh, uncoalesce memory accesses. So let's take a look at how we implement the tile merge kernel. Um, as, uh, so in, in the beginning, what we have is uh, these uh, two input lists a and B in global memory, output list C will also be in global memory. And then in shared memory, we are going to have a, um, some uh, resurface space for tiles from A and B. But, but the very first thing that we have to do is finding what are the uh, current and next ranks for each uh, uh, different thread for each individual thread block. What we are doing here is dividing the whole input into different sections and each of the sections of the output are assigned to each of the available thread blocks. In our example, we have three thread blocks, zero, one, and two. And this is how we split the output array C <clears throat> among these uh, uh, thread blocks, zero, one, and two. So after having found the uh, ranks uh, for this block, block zero, one, and two. We have to find the core ranks in the uh, arrays uh, A and B. And then 
we can start copying tiles from A and B to the shared memory. This is what block zero is going to copy for a start. This is uh, for block one, and this is for block two. Soon after that, we have the uh, uh, threads of uh, each block going through the elements of A and B that are now in shared memory in these tiles. They start comparing them, them. they are uh, actually ex executing the actual merge operation and writing to the output in the corresponding places. We are going to see how exactly in the next few slides. And this is, uh, these are the elements uh, from uh, A and B that uh, block one is handling and writing to the output section. And this is for uh, block two. So in this style merge, merge kernel, we assign output sections to the thread blocks. Each, thre each uh, section, we should make sure that each section is large enough. It has at least a few thousand elements that are reasonable size of the section. Then we will have a leader thread in each thread block performing the binary or NRE search to identify the input sections to find what are the uh, core ranks. Then it will communicate the core rank values to the other threads in the block. And then each block <coughs> can uh, iteratively generate the output section. In each iteration, the threads of the block load collaboratively one tile from A, one tile from B into the shared memory and they perform the merge operation using the values in shared memory. Each tile should have at least a few hundred uh, elements that, that, that's um, a reasonable size uh, that uh, in, in the end, <clears throat> the exact size that we will use depends on the available shared memory that we have, depends on the number of threads that we are using per a thread block, but as you know, uh, typical numbers of uh, threads per block are something between 32, which is a minimum recommendable, the warp size up to 1024. So that's why it makes sense that um, <clears throat> each tile is at least of a few hundred elements. <clears throat> Next, um, we divide the output tile into uh, uh, subsections and assign them to the threads. So then <clears throat> each subsection should have at least a few tens of elements such that each thread uh, can work with uh, another. But as you see, we are uh, dividing the output into sections that are assigned to the different thread blocks. Then we divide each of these output sections into tiles. We operate, we calculate, we find uh, what are the values in the output tiles using uh, input tiles in shared memory from A and B. And um, inside each thread block, we also divide the tiles into the available threads so that each thread can perform a sequential merge. And this way, all threads perform uh, merge, sequential merge operations in parallel um, using the elements of the input tiles. So um, um, as, as we have seen, first of all, we have to identify the K current and K next for um, each of the thread blocks that are involved in the merge sort operation, then we have to find what are the current values because these define what are the input subarrays for block zero, for block one, and for block two. So uh, these uh, two pieces here, these two sections here are the input subarrays for block zero, this section here and this section here for block one, and these and these are for block two. And this is how uh, all code looks like. <clears throat> uh, the merge tile kernel, we first start allocating uh, memory in, in shared memory, and we uh, say allocate like a large uh, uh, tile, and we divide it in two uh, pieces of tile size that are um, going to be used to, to keep the, uh, to store the uh, tile from A and the tile from B. We have to obtain for each thread block what's the starting point for the current block uh, and the starting point for the next block because they define these are K current and K next. In this um, code, we call them C current and C next because they define what are the bounds of the section that has been assigned to one specific thread block. And then we have the leader thread in this case, uh, thread with uh, thread index equals zero that um, executes the core rank function for both C current and C next. And then uh, it obtains, remember with this uh, core rank function, we obtain I 
So uh, what thread zero does is storing uh, the I current and the I next uh, into shared memory. It's um, um, simply writing them in, 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 in two positions of uh, these uh, AS uh, array in shared memory that is going to be used later to, uh, to, to store, to keep the uh, tile from array A. But for now, uh, we use them to write the current values for communication with the other threads of the block. So that's why we need to synchronize here. Right after that, all threads of the block read AS0, read AS1, write them into the uh, A current and A next. This way, all of them know where the um, um, input tile from A and the input tile from B um, start and when they finish, where they finish as well. And then we have to synchronize again because now these two positions, AS and A, um, AS0 and AS1, are going to be overwritten with values from the tile coming from global memory. So that's what we do next, it's loading the tiles. Um, that this block zero uh, or a threads in block zero, read the whole tile from array A or list A, uh, write it to share memory, same for uh, list B. This is what uh, block one does with uh, the section, the, the tile from um, <clears throat> list A from list B, and this is for uh, list, uh, so this is for uh, block two. And this is the code for the uh, loading tiles operation after um, having you know, initialized these um, uh, different variables that define the length of the section uh, in C, in A, in B, the total number of iterations based on what's the tile size that the uh, thread block will have to um, uh, perform. Uh, we start this uh, while loop for the total number of iterations. First of all, the threads of the thread block go to uh, list A, read one tile, bring it to the um, shared memory, and we do the same for uh, list B, and then we synchronize. After that, we generate the output tile, or we start generating the output tile based on the values that we already have in shared memory coming from lists A and B. So, for example, in the case of block zero, uh, block zero threads are going to consume all these uh, range of elements here from, from the tile of, uh, from tile AS, uh, these ones from the um, tile BS, and write them uh, to the output. And for this is for block one, and this is for uh, block two. Now, uh, one uh, in, in thing that we have to observe here is that in reality, we are likely not consuming the uh, whole uh, uh, input tiles that uh, are allocated in shared memory, but only part of the uh, tiles. So that's why we want to keep track of how much of the tiles has been consumed. That's why we use these variables A consume and B consume, because we need to uh, we need them to keep track of what elements from the input have already been copied or have already been placed uh, onto the output and start from there. So this is the um, next, next part of the uh, tile merge kernel where we partition the tiles among the threads. Remember that the input tiles uh, that, that are already in, in the uh, shared memory uh, are going to be distributed across the threads that belong uh, to the same thread block, and this way they can perform a sequential merge on the pieces of the input that have been assigned to them. So that's uh, exactly what we do here. We know uh, exactly what's the, um, so we know what's the size of the tiles that we are uh, dividing now uh, among the uh, threads of the uh, same thread block, of the same block. So for each thread with a given thread ID, the uh, uh, the, the part, the subsection of the uh, output array C that is um, assigned to them is uh, given by this C current and this C next. Uh, and using this C current and C next, each thread individually finds the uh, corresponding core rank values. In this case, A current, B current, A next, and B next. And by using them, the thread can perform the sequential merge on the subsection that was assigned to it. After that, we update the um, corresponding uh, variables that we, we are using to 
control the access to the uh, data structures. Um, the performance of this uh, kernel that is like a relatively simple version of the tile merge kernel can be improved further if we generate the output section in shared memory as well. We would need to reserve another tile uh, for the output in shared memory. This way, all threads write first to shared memory. And after that, we can have coalesced accesses. We can move the output tile from shared memory to the global memory by doing uh, coalesced memory accesses. That's an optimization that is not uh, covered in detail in this lecture, because in reality is um, pretty much related to uh, other uh, ways of using the shared memory that we have discussed in previous lectures. So now in the next uh, iteration, in iteration one, we have to load again new tiles from uh, the shared memory. But now remember that there is part of the tiles that have been, um, uh, that have been consumed and another part that is not consumed. And that's what we have to take into account because we would need to um, start uh, copying the tile from here or from here or from here or from here. The reason why the input tiles may have not been completely um, uh, consumed depends on the values of uh, that, that, that the, the, of the list, right? That of the elements, the values of the elements uh, from lists A and B that are in shared memory. Imagine that all elements uh, of this style are um, smaller, are lower, or equal to all elements of this other tile. What that means is that we are going to copy all these elements to the output, but we don't even touch the elements of the other tile. So in the end, in the worst case, we are only copying uh, half of the values to the output, half of the values that we loaded into the shared memory to the uh, corresponding locations uh, in the output. So that's why we have to keep track of how much of the tiles we have really consumed. And then uh, start loading uh, from there. So in this case, uh, we are going to load again one whole tile from A, one whole tile from B, this is from block zero, this is from block one, and so on and so forth. The problem here, as you can observe, is that we are reloading, we are accessing again elements that we read once, placed into uh, the, in, into the uh, shared memory. Now we uh, forget about them and read them again from global memory and place them again uh, to the shared memory. So in the end, there are some elements that we are accessing twice and, 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 and unfortunately wasting the uh, memory bandwidth. So this style merge kernel has pros and cons among the pros that the, we have uh, coalesced loads for the input elements. Um, uh, th this way we have uh, reduced global memory traffic uh, for the current functions. We have uh, thread level current functions that are done in shared memory. And we can also have coalesced stores if the output tiles are generated in shared memory as we briefly explained as a potential optimization. However, um, the main con or drawback of the style merge kernel is that not all the elements of the uh, input tiles that we load into shared memory are used. So in the worst case, only half of them are used and we will need to go to the global memory again to read the same elements that were read before. So that's why we want to propose a more, um, let's say, sophisticated mechanism to keep the tiles into the shared memory that is based on circular, bu circular buffering. It's a more complicated, more sophisticated data structure, but as you can see, it's going to give us further efficiency in the memory accesses because it avoids that we have to reload elements that were previously loaded into the shared memory. So let's just start from arrays uh, or lists A and B in global memory. We also have allocated the space in the shared memory, this AS and BS. So we start loading one tile from A, one tile from B into the shared memory, and we define what's the point where the buffer starts. In this case, we have these variables, AS start and BS start, that are equal to zero in the uh, very beginning, in this um, very initial uh, step of the uh, operation. So after uh, uh, consuming some of the elements from AS and BS, we update AS start and um, BS start. And now we know that 
because all these elements here and all these elements here have, have been consumed, we can reuse these shared memory locations to keep loading values from A and B. However, we are going to maintain in the shared memory these values here and these values here, here that have not been consumed. So what we do is go into the global memory, reading from the global memory, a piece of A and a piece of B that are of the size, the tile size available in the uh, shared memory. So we read them and place them in the corresponding shared memory locations. So this is where we start with the next iteration. Observe that now threads will have to start uh, searching for values uh, in these tiles where the corresponding pointer A is a start or B is a start indicate. So in the uh, next iteration, probably um, the threads consume this part here, this part here for uh, array AS and for BS, this part here, and we update the uh, AS start and BS start correspondingly. This is the code for the um, uh, for loading the uh, circular buffering tiles. Um, the, in the beginning, um, the, the, the AS start and BS start is equal zero. And in the beginning, the, um, uh, it's, uh, the, the whole tile size that we can uh, load uh, from the from global memory into the uh, shared memory. We are going to perform, as you know, uh, from before, from the previous um, uh, tile merge kernel, a uh, number of iterations that is controlled by this counter here. Uh, first of all, we load or refill um, AES consumed elements um, into AES, depending on what's the value of AES consumed and BES consumed. We are going to load more or less elements into the um, um, in a specific area or, uh, of the shared memory, AES or BS. This is for AS, uh, this is for BS. Observe that in both cases, we are loading as many elements as um, uh, uh, free positions we have in AS and BS. Now there is an, one challenge here when handling this uh, complicated data structure is the fact that in the circular buffer, uh, the tiles war, uh, wrap around. And what that means is that uh, we, uh, we may need to compare to a low, a higher rank uh, element, higher rank value of A and B or B that may reside in a lower address memory location in uh, shared memory. So in the end, this makes the handling of the core rank values more complex. In reality, as I said, um, we may have uh, initial values of A is a start and B is a start that are here. And for one particular thread uh, in the thread block that is uh, using these two tiles, the A current and A next indices might point uh, here in this case, um, in the case of AS. However, in the case of BS, because uh, the, the tiles uh, uh, wrap around, you see that uh, B current is actually a higher index than B next. This is um, this entails a challenge because, for example, if we want to uh, calculate what's the size of the section or the subsection that one particular thread uh, is going to work on, um, in the case of uh, in this particular example for AES, we can simply calculate this size as A next minus uh, A current. However, in the case of uh, BS, um, we have to take into account the fact that. Uh, B next is a lower index than B current. So in that case, we would need to calculate B size from here to here uh, by using this expression, B next minus B current plus the tile size. In order to uh, operate, to handle the um, uh, data structure, the, the circular buffer in a simpler way, uh, what we propose is our, what the, uh, uh, the, the the particular implementation that we are discussing here proposes is a simplified model for the core rank values that assumes that uh, the indices don't need to uh, wrap around. They, they simply uh, continue increasing. And even though the, the size of the tile is uh, certainly limited, um, what we do is like obtaining kind of uh, virtual uh, core rank values such that B next or A next is always greater than 
uh, or greater or equal than uh, B uh, uh, current or uh, A current. And this way, we can always calculate uh, in this um, example the distance uh, between both indices using the uh, same expression, B next minus B current. And this is how the uh, code looks like. Remember, this is actually the, the actual code where we uh, divide the uh, output tile uh, uh, among the available uh, threads in the thread block, and then each individual thread block calculates or obtains uh, A current, B current, A next, and B next. Um, to do so, uh, we just need to uh, change the way that we call this a uh, core rank function. Um, in, in reality, there, there is not much difference uh, if you compare this code of the circular buffer merge kernel with the uh, original tile merge, merge kernel. It's essentially the same code, um, um, mainly the calls to the core rank and merge sequential functions uh, change, but not more than that. And um, more or less is the same for the final part of the uh, while loop where we update the consumed and completed variables that keep track of the uh, parts of the um, input arrays that have been consumed and the parts of the output array that have already been written. So um, interesting observation here is that, uh, as I said before, only the sequential merge and current functions change. Um, and um, uh, essentially, this uh, uh, implies that a well-designed library interface, such as the one in this particular example, limits the uh, impact on the user code. The thing that we uh, really have to change internally is the core rank function, in this case, the uh, core rank circular function, where, as you see, we are uh, using this I, sir, I, I, I circular, this IM1 circular, J circular, and JM1 circular that wrap around um, based on the uh, what's the tile size. And we need them, we need the exact values of them in order to uh, access the correct values from the uh, input uh, sections of A and uh, B. But in the end, the, um, the binary search here is exactly the same, obtaining delta value and then updating the corresponding variables I and J, uh, depending on what's the condition that is uh, fulfilled here. And this is the uh, sequential merge for uh, with uh, circular buffers. Uh, again, you can uh, observe that the uh, code itself of the algorithm doesn't change. It's only that we have to use this I circular and this J circular in order to access the right elements from the uh, tiles in A and B, uh, taking into account that the indices in reality uh, wrap around um, because the limited tile size. So that's uh, essentially it. Uh, as a summary, merge sort is a really important primitives in, 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 in some algorithms, like sorting algorithms, for example, also very important for map reduce frameworks. Uh, the parallelization of merge sort requires each thread to dynamically identify its input ranges. That's what makes this implementation challenging, but also extremely interesting. The input ranges are data dependent, as we have seen. And, um, and there are also challenges when using tiling because of the fact that we may need to reload elements that were previously loaded but not consumed. That why, that's why we propose the use of circular buffers, even though it's a more uh, complicated data structure, more sophisticated data structure, and, and, and as you have seen, it um, implies more complex calculation of the indices to access data um, from the shared memory. However, we can uh, use a simplified buffer access model uh, to not increase the, co the code complexity that much. Uh, this is all for today. If you want to read more about this merge sort uh, parallel pattern, I uh, recommend you chapter 11 in the book, Programming Massively Parallel Processors. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope to see you in the next lecture of our course on Ethereum Systems.